Many of these young footballers in Sevastopol hope to become professionals one day. Until recently, their club played in Ukraine's Premier League. But now the boys' dreams have been dashed, at least for now. Now, following the Russian annexation of Crimea in March, the club should technically also belong to Russia. The boys are confused. We don't have a professional team anymore. Now they're trying to set up a new one. Of course we're worried. And now our sports school is also under threat. This is my life. Football means everything to me. I've devoted almost all my life to it. None of them ever imagined they could ever become political pawns. But the club psychologist says the current crisis is a recurring topic in the dressing room. Of course, we're all concerned, but especially the young players. They're not mature enough to have fixed views about politics or citizenship. What's important is that they don't lose their love of sport, that they remain physically fit and don't forget everything they've learned. Now they can only attend training sessions. The authorities have forbidden them from playing in the Ukrainian league, and the Ukrainian Football Association refuses to let them transfer to the Russian league. A vexing situation for club founder Yevgeny Repenkov. He says the club's professional players have already left and now play for other Ukrainian teams, while these young players are left out in the cold. All these boys on the field have been registered in the Ukrainian Football Association since they were 10, and now it's not letting them play for Russia. I can't understand that. What about FIFA and UEFA? Aren't they supposed to defend the interests of football players? The team wants to kick off the new season in Sevastopol's biggest stadium as a new Russian club, even without the go-ahead from international football associations. If permission were granted, it could be seen by Moscow as a sign of approval for Russia's annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. The Russian football authorities readily issued the club with a new license and also provided 15 new Russian players. But there isn't enough money. The club's former sponsor withdrew his support because he disagreed with Russia's annexation. And the banking system has collapsed. I've been in Moscow several times and I've met many football organizations and politicians. The decision was taken to support the club, because now even I can't take a loan out as a businessman, let alone a club. The banks aren't working. But the young players don't want to wait until normality returns. They want to play and they want politics to be kept out of football. Rabenkov has called on the Ukrainian Football Association to set them free. So that Sevastopol can play again, even if it means under the Russian flag. I want to believe that our boys will be able to play again. Football is for people, for the fans, for the people of the city. I believe that FIFA and UEFA will come to us and say, yes, you're right, football is a national sport. I believe our club will blossom and will attract even more boys. For years, it didn't matter in Crimea who was Russian and who was Ukrainian. That's why many of the boys wouldn't mind playing for a Russian team. We're training again, and we're hoping that everything will be great again. If we get into the Russian League, it will all be fine. The level is higher in the Russian League and so is the training. I've heard it's better than in Ukraine. They say they can prove themselves in the Russian League if only they're allowed to play. Yevgeny Repenkov has some 500 talented young men in his club. 
he can't send them all home. <laughs> 